This program is part of WQED's Pittsburgh History Series. Like, think of today, this event. It's 32 degrees in Pittsburgh. It's April 7th. It's supposed to be spring. So what happened? We are at the Pittsburgh Vintage Mixer in Lawrenceville, Pennsylvania. It's one of our favorite events in the city. We've been doing this with them for years, and we love the great group of people that comes around for these events. Everybody here is be here because they love vintage. I mean, I love it. So excited to be here today. Um, I've been a longtime shopper of, of the Mixer, and it's really great that we get to be here today. I am a thrifter and I like the flea markets and I enjoy various events like this. Well, this is our fifth year participating. We come every year uh, basically just to hang out and to party. Making money is not important. It's just really just to come here and just really having a great time. This gathering of enthusiastic vendors and shoppers happens at least twice a year. A trio of Pittsburghers, Bess Dunlevy, Jason Sumney, and Michael Lutz, select an intriguing group of people who sell old things, and then the trio invites people to come and shop in this zany sort of impromptu department store they call the Pittsburgh Vintage Mixer. I, I used to have a notebook with all of the names that we came up with for the event, and I couldn't find it last night. Um, there's some really bad ones on there. I think once somebody had suggested Mixer, it just like light bulbs went off over our heads because it is a mix. Traditionally, you think of a mixer, you think of people walking around having a cocktail, it's sort of a social thing. You know, it's like you're at a party and everything's for sale and you can shop, you know, it's kind of fun. Well, the vintage mixer, we've always sort of thought of as this vintage party that you could also buy things and take things home. And the vintage mixer also implies a vintage mixer. <laughs> always that little appliance. The mixer is our, the mixer is our little, uh, yeah, our little mascot. And I actually have the vintage mixer that we started to use as our first our first logo here. It's, it's a Hamilton Beach mixer. So that, that also helps, yeah. It does. So we're also calling this program Pittsburgh Vintage Mixer. It works. This program in the Nebby series is made possible in part by the Buell Foundation, serving southwestern Pennsylvania since 1927. By Lewis Anthony Jewelers, proud supporter of Pittsburgh and its treasures by Huntington Bank, serving communities since 1866. By Levin Furniture, furnishing Pittsburgh homes since 1920. Also by the Engineers Society of Western Pennsylvania. By Henny Henninger. By the Lincoln Pharmacy in Millvale. By Mancini's Bread. By Pamela's P&G Diners. And by all 1,411 backers of our Nebby Kickstarter. Thanks to everybody. Organizing a Pittsburgh market takes a lot of work and coordination, but you don't necessarily need to live in the same neighborhood. Jason and Michael live on the north side with lots of vinyl LPs. Yeah, Jason and I are both big record collectors. Um, we always have been, so um, now that we have a huge house, it's great to just let it go. <laughs> and here it is. <laughs> Bess lives in Castle Shannon in a suitably vintage house full of interesting stuff. You know, I don't buy a lot of new. I'm trying to see if there's anything in here. No. <laughs> Stuff, this is from Waynesburg College, and this is from a thrift store, and this is from a thrift store. Um, some of these pieces are from the mixer as well. So, I mean, we just work so well together. We still do. It's, it's so much fun. We also have an online vintage shop that we call Red Pop Shop, which is the same three of us that do the mixer, and we had started it before the mixer, so the mixer kind of came out of Red Pop Shop. And so we came up with this idea of the mixer. Um, we wanted it to have some atmosphere. We wanted it to just there to be a fun vibe. We wanted there to be a bar. And we wanted something that was strictly vintage. And when you go there, you know it's all just going to be vintage and it's going to be good stuff that's been really well curated. So uh, we set up shop at the New Hazlitt Theater um, on the north side, and that was in July of 2012. Soon after that, we were approached by the Heinz History Center. They wanted to do an event called uh, Vintage Pittsburgh. We did a few of those, and then we went out on our own and found Teamsters Hall in Lawrenceville, and we've been there for many of these recent events, and, uh, and we like doing it on our own. The place is called the Teamster Temple, 
It has two floors of space that can be filled with a huge variety of vintage goods. It's a cool older building, so it matches our aesthetic, and we, we've really loved working with them. This one's just a Saturday event. You want to put one chair in there? Just, that's all you need? We get there uh, the day before on Friday. We get there early, around 8 o'clock in the morning. We get there early. Tape off all the spaces, and you know we have a schedule when people are going to be loading in their stuff. Vendors start arriving middle of the day, and they set up all of their spots in advance of Saturday's show. So they're there throughout the day Friday, prepping, setting up merchandising. Then we work on getting the dressing rooms ready. And you know, we have volunteers too to help us do some of this stuff, so which is great. And you know, we also, we hang lights and we get music playing and you know, get all the food people set up and all the signs put up. It's a lot of work, um, but it's a, it's a labor of love. And uh, then Saturday morning, it's ready to go. And the doors open at nine. I have to say, it goes pretty smoothly. You'd think that it wouldn't, but it does. Does it cost to get in? Five dollars per person, 12 and under is free. Hopefully people come pouring in. What got me here today, just the idea that I could chop two floors of vintage wares that are unique, you can't get anywhere else, and you will probably never find again. The home show is especially fun because we have a nice little 50s Cape Cod style house in Wilkinsburg, and we want to make sure it's decked out in all of the 50s style stuff, so here we come. It looks a little bit different. I, it's like there's less clothing, kind of more stuff, which is what, what I'm interested in. So this is this is a this is a cool one. Um, I pretty much want to buy everything, right? Which is need terrible. more money. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I need to be rich. We're into this big time. Everything vintage. We like live, breathe, eat. Everything vintage. Yep. Stuck in the past. <laughs> I'm a picker. I go to sales and buy stuff to resell, but sometimes I like to come support the other pickers in the area. Albums, I love vinyl, and I heard you guys have vinyl here, so that's really what brought me here was the vinyl records. We came on a uh, just a spur of the moment type thing, something different for the weekend. We were following uh, the uh, vintage mixer on social media, and we saw some pictures that were posted pre-opening, so we got here early. Uh, I'm a military reenactor and a collector, so this is the kind of places I turn up looking for mitts and baseball gloves and razor blades and things like that, anything from the 30s and 40s that I can use. There's uh, some freaky rabbits over there that, you know, what night bears are made of. Animatronic scary bunnies. <laughs> that someone is 100% going to buy today. Absolutely. They are not leaving with the vendor. I also think they're just really, like, the customers are super appreciative, the vendor community at this event. Hi, I want to make a purchase. All right, cool. My name is Stephanie Ten Sivak, and this is our store, 100% Polyverse. Live in that polyester universe. Right now you are at the Artica store, which is a store on Penn Avenue in Garfield. Best location to tell you is it's right across the street from the pizza shop, Sprat Brothers. We actually at the store do 100 years of fashion, 1870s through the 1970s. So we have a, a large selection of, of fashion, men's and women's. I'm here today, I'm from Pittsburgh. I actually live in New England now, mm, Burlington, Vermont. But from Pittsburgh, so I take every opportunity I can when this event pops up to come back and support it. We are Who Knew Retro Mod Decor. Roger and I have owned uh, our shop for over 16 years now. Whenever we both yeah. started working together on it, I was like, well, every time we do something the same, we say twinage. Twinage. So I was like, <laughs> twinage vintage, it kind of just rolls off your tongue, and that's what kind of stuck at this yep. point, yeah. My vibe is unique antique. So I used to travel to Hawaii quite a bit and to Florida all the time. I just got back from a six-week visit, and I'll be leaving again in, later this month and I buy a lot of the things that you see here and bring them back up to Pittsburgh. This is uh, my booth um, for the Vintage Mixer. It's my, I believe my ninth okay. or 10th show that I've been doing with them. I love this stuff. I love finding it and we play with it for a little bit and then I think yeah. it's nice to, re that's the name of my shop is Do Not Destroy so I like to keep also new toys are kind of boring like yeah. some of the older toys are more fun all of this stuff are things that I've collected over the past three years and I've been um, getting ready to showcase my items in Pittsburgh we actually used to work at Goodwill so we started <laughs> yeah in high school it was like one of our first jobs so we started seeing all these cool things and we started collecting them and 
holding on to them and then before we knew it was hard to get rid of it and then we started just selling yeah and our house is sort of like a collection but then we try to recycle it and bring it out to you know and sell it you know to people that we can this is um, Batasi and Italian and Blinko glass and laurel lamps and West German pottery over there. We sell uh, men's and women's vintage clothing, 1950s to 1990s. We do accessories, bags, scarves, but mostly focus on those in the vintage world, newer decades. And all the dealers are mixed up from the last time I was here, so you got to get your bearings first. But we generally just start from the right, go around to the left. Go. There's another floor down here. We went down there, and now we come and do it again because there were some things that caught our eye and we said, oh, we'll keep that in mind. Yeah. Just want to see something I haven't seen before. Because you miss stuff. You can't just go one lap. This is not a one lap place. In fact, if you follow me in the next half an hour, you're going to see me shopping. So yeah, just great stuff. I'm more interested in houseware stuff. She's more interested in clothing stuff. So <laughs> she's generally like browsing through this clothing parts and I'm, I was in the downstairs. I, I just came up. It was amazing. So this is our second round, actually. We did a lap already, a, a slow lap, too. <laughs> Went downstairs, <laughs> and this is our second lap upstairs. So we take our time, and I think just whatever catches our eye. I want it to mean something. We just got here, so yeah, we're we just, just got here, so it's. We do a quick run through to see who has what we like, <laughs> and then we go back and we're looking at things to purchase. She's the digger. She dives in to the booths. Yeah. Um, and I kind of stand on the periphery unless there's something that I need to look at and then she has me come in and take stuff. So <laughs> we kind of move around that way. Yeah. Uh, we got to go downstairs still, haven't been down there. I don't own any vinyl, but I love looking through those vinyls. Um, yeah, so it was fun. Need time to marinate on a potential purchase. This is true. Yeah, you can put it Pick on. Pick something up, put it back down, take a lap. You might buy it when you come this back around. This is true. It might speak to you later. It might be cheaper that time. That's true. Negotiate. You know, you come to these every year. You say hi to the same people, you know, once or twice a year. You check out what they got. You do the loop. You got to, you kind of have your own rhythm. When you're in Pittsburgh, you know, come, come with what you got. Actually, I'm proud of this one because it's, it's a Kaufman's original. And the special thing about this coat is that it came from Joseph Horn Company, which is obviously a Pittsburgh institution and is no longer standing. So when I found it, I was extremely excited, also because it was a dollar. Um, so I went and I had to have it, and now it's my favorite coat. This is a Made in Hawaii Moomoo from the 1960s. I picked it for its comfort and its color. It's a fun fashion event. I think folks maybe can't wear that stuff to the office all that often, but they wear it to the mixer, you know? I very much purposely wore this dress today. I will admit it. Because it's you, you just want to look cute. And, you know, there's so many cute things here, and there's so many people who look amazing. I mean, you want to see and be seen. And I love seeing when people put something on, you just are like, oh my gosh, if they don't get that, I don't know if I should tell them they're crazy if they walk away from it or what. But and uh, they always say it feels like I belong with it. Yeah. Right? I don't we think all this is going to fit enjoy. me, but I'm going to try. You're going to try it on. It's my goal for the summer. I don't know. The styles constantly come back. Like One of my favorite examples is 1950s clothing, um, 70s. It's just a remake of the 50s. So everything just recircle, recircles back. I mean, fashion is a revolving door. Mm -hmm. The old things always come back, and this is back. I grew up in the 70s, and I want everything back. As a shopper and as a seller, um, you pick up things that just reminds you of when you were young. But I know for me, when I see these, there's something about remembering growing up and seeing my mom wearing these kind of clothes. It, it might even not be stuff that I buy, but I come across things like I had that Ronald McDonald glass, that set of glasses uh, when, you know, I, when I was eight years old. I think the reason why we do it is it's kind of nostalgic, you know, you want to um, kind of relive the past, the, the past just a little bit, you know, and see what it was. It takes you back to a time maybe when you felt like a little kid and anything was possible, you could escape. It's a treasure hunt. You know, you, you just don't, when that moment you find something you've been looking for for years and you stumble across it in a place like this. There, it's a vase. This is my new vase right here. <laughs> I love it. I bought a suitcase one time because it was the same suitcase we used to take on vacation with us when we were kids. Well, I've always liked um, 
collecting things, older comic books, music, of course. So I think style has a lot to do with it, too. So, like, I'm a big fan of mid-century modern, and just the sometimes just the lines of a chair can just get you excited, you know. <laughs> I think part of it is where they came from, the history, um, who used them before us, and that there is a story there. There's some things that are really hard for me to let go. I've sold things and then have regretted it for whatever reason. I've had it for this long or I, you know, it was mine at one point. Um, yeah, but that happens, so. Yeah, and then there's the quality side of it, too. I just think, you know, any, the, the, mo most of the stuff in this room has already lasted 50 years. We joke all the time that in 20 years, we won't have a vintage shop. You know, there wouldn't be a vintage shop because things aren't made with the high quality as it used to be. Every time I like see an old piece, I'm like, first thing I do is lift up the hem to see the hand stitching. Like someone took the time to do that. So I'm like, okay, this piece has stood the test of time. It's gorgeous and it'll probably live on for hopefully another 50 years or 60 because we find a lot of 50, 60 stuff. Oh yes, they were made to last. I mean, pieces that are from the 20s, they've lasted 80, 90 years as opposed to stuff now where it's meant to last only about a year and a half. Everything was just much prettier back then. Everything now just seems to be so stark. It, they actually had industrial designers back then that actually made radios and televisions look beautiful. Today is such a throwaway world in so many ways, and this stuff just keeps. I say now the young people buy a lot of disposable furniture, but the stuff we grew up with is just, it was just quality. Everything was made out of wood. It's a beautiful chair. In the mid-century furniture, with the walnut and the teak, it's, not, it's just, you can't do much to it unless you set it on fire or spill stuff all over it, you know? I have noticed that the things that I gravitate to are things that I remember being in my grandparents' house when I would come to visit. The first thing that I ever collected was my grandmother's dish pattern, like her Pyrex bowl. And it makes us feel so good when people say, oh, my grandma had this, my aunt had this. This reminds me of my mom's house. Hardly a day goes by at our shop where some young person doesn't walk into the shop and say, I had no idea my grandmother had such hip taste. We bought a house in Coriopolis about a year and a half ago, and it's from the 20s and has those old radiators. Um, so uh, we're gonna probably put on one of those radiators next to a, my grandmother's chair. We are originally from South Korea, um, and we think a lot about it. Why doesn't South Korea have a lot of like vintage fair or vintage shops like this? Um, and we think that the, um, it, it's a, there's a like, conception that oh, like Asian people value like history or tradition more, but it seems to us that Americans are also very good at, you know, valuing the past, valuing the history, valuing what um, our, our parents or our grandparents wore or what they enjoyed. I think it's really nice. That. These are the bowls that just make my heart happy, so. <laughs> In one corner of the hall, you can buy food and drinks. The slab pies and the carrot cake are from a pastry kitchen called Pie Bird. We've been doing it for two or, th two or three years. And um, pie and vintage stuff just kind of makes sense together. The pie bird is a ceramic bird that you put in a pie that releases the steam so that the crust doesn't blow out. Do you use them? No. I bet there's some here though. Oh yeah, right? Next to pie bird and in the nearby kitchen, Badamo's Pizza is making other pies. So what do we want to do next? We have the, pe the plain and we'll do the pepperoni. No, we'll do the white one after that, yeah. Anthony Badamo has two pizzerias in the Pittsburgh area, but he comes here and makes pizzas for the vintage mixer. I love it, yeah. Yeah, I love doing this stuff off-site. It, like, breaks up the monotony of the shop. Uh, you know, I'm here with my guys. We're crushing it, having a good time, uh, meeting new people. This is what we do every day, so we're, we're happy to be here. We're happy to help out, and... Uh, and feed everybody. I think this is a great event. Yeah, I'm, 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 uh, I'm loving it. This is our second time doing the pizza here. I dream about pizza. I dream, I dream about cooking it. I dream about eating it. <laughs> I dream about selling it. He and organizer Bess Dunlevy are old friends. When me and Bess used to hang out when we were younger, I mean, we would go to thrift stores. You know what I mean? We would 
we would shop for you know clothes kitschy stuff for the house furniture that sort of thing and it's always been like a huge passion of hers and uh so this event you know it encompasses like the whole spectrum of that you know it's just it's a fun thing yeah one more blast to romano and we're going in and the shopping goes on this is a set of Allegheny Ludlum silverware that was made at Allegheny Ludlum. It's stamped Allegheny metal, made of Pittsburgh steel. We love it when people say, oh, this is my silverware set. So yeah, we like that Pittsburgh history. I mean, I come looking for Pyrex sometimes. Uh, it's one thing that's kind of easy for me to pick out and see. You look for the rare stuff that someone might not know what they have. So this, like in the 50s and 60s, this was a manufacturing hub of mid-century modern design. So it's kind of Kensington Aluminum, Alcoa. Right. I mean, all these things that are, are locally produced that are now w collected worldwide is very cool to us. Pittsburgh history had a little bit of tiki over the ages. There was Conlian, the Mauna Loa, the Hukilau. It's a city that is old. It has a lot of old things and a lot of appreciation for things that are old. There's a lot of old homes and there's a lot of people with great old stuff in their homes. So, when it comes to this time of year, sometimes, you know, they sell it, sometimes they give it to people who do sell it. So, I think there is a plethora of mid-century modern items in the Pittsburgh area. This is a 1950s hot dog cooker, but it looks brand new and uh, I only opened it just to see the condition. I think they take a lot of pride in the city and do a lot to maintain the historical aspect and it's, that was one of the things that drew me to this city as well, besides him. So I think Pittsburgh is key to why this is a success. I, found, I got down the Iris because it's Pittsburgh. The original Oyster House beer. Who knew they had their own beer? Pittsburgh matters with everything. <laughs> so my wife got this for herself. Nice worn out thin pirates. Not too excited about the moves they've been making. I will say that, but we'll still, still support them. And a nice looking flannel for me. I come here all the time buying vinyl. I caught two classics. One is James Brown's Soul Classics, and another one is a group that Prince produced back in the mid 80s called Madhouse. I got this lovely little 70s piece right here, which I am so pumped to wear for the summer. Yeah, we don't know exactly where he came from. There's no provenance to him, but you know. You gotta collect them, you gotta keep these things, otherwise they disappear. This just spoke to me when I walked in and fortunately nobody was too close to it. <laughs> A couple of kitchen items, because we love vintage kitchen stuff. This apron. Got a Superman number nine, 199, uh, the original Superman Flash race. And have this nude by no name in particular, but I think it's very well done. And I do collect um, nudes, and I thought this would be a nice addition. And the price was right. I bought a very colorful scarf because I'm a person that really enjoys scarves. I'm a collector. I have quite a few of them, matter of fact. And so this is one I can add to my collection. So it's very pretty. Nice jewel tones. It'll be perfect. Well, I was absolutely delighted to find this little piano which happens to be a working phone so that's what we got so far isn't that great those old little placards that are sort of like trivets that our grandmothers used to have that are that are black and yellow i've started a little collection of those because i think and they have sayings on them so today i stumbled upon one um and it says i'm I'm not a fast bartender, I'm not a slow bartender, I'm a half fast bartender. So it's gonna go into the collection. <laughs> um, I really love buttons. So I got some two really cool buttons. Um, the first one I'll show you is, uh, it says, find your fantasy, read. Kinda all came together for me. Um, the second button, it's, uh, it's a question. And it says, wanna suck face? I just thought it, 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 it speaks for itself, so. Um, I got it from the shop Do Not Destroy in the corner. We lived with this in our home for about 10 years. Fabulous. Maybe it needs a little WD-40. It's a moss lamp made in the 50s. Yeah. Where can you get something like that today? This was early uh, um, 
uh, Radio Shack, 1981, by Tomy, a Japanese company. He would, uh, it's a cassette tape. It, w you, it would take its directions from uh, the cassette tape, I understand, and you could have it bring you drinks. I'm going to take them. All right. Vintage cocktail glasses. Nice thing to sit and sip your old fashioned with at the end of the day. You know, I had to smile. Nobody smokes as much anymore. But there are a million ashtrays, and you go, oh, look at this, look at that. You know, it's. Yeah. The boomerang ashtray. Love it. This would be it. Why? I don't even smoke, and I love ashtrays. That's what makes it so cool. It's just like, you just see it. It's a boomerang. It's just really cool. The day's been really incredible. Uh, people through the door, upstairs, downstairs. You know, it's a chance to be a little weird and a little out there and have a good time at the same time. Everyone's finding some treasures, things that their grandparents had. Isn't it awesome? I love it. It's been a lot of running around. My feet are very tired. All the pieces yeah. over there, we made sure. It's good. good it was only $10. Ten so. I was just so happy seeing everybody. I mean, just seeing everybody come together is just such a good feeling. And... I sold an electric piano. This actually was an, it's an air organ, and um, a young gentleman who's a pianist bought it, and it's probably from the 70s. I'm not entirely sure of its background. It's perfect. I, I thought it would be perfect to just put in my room. Easy to write songs. Today is really busy, <laughs> yeah, and we have sold more than we thought, and it's <laughs> awesome that we're going home with a lot less stuff. The thing I love about what we do is when somebody buys a piece that they just fall in love with. I collect vintage Easter toys and memorabilia, candy containers, and I just kind of got my holy grail. And to me, that's my whole day right there. If you love it and you're hugging it when you walk away, I did my job. It's mechanized and it opens up and there's a scary rabbit that pops out of the inside of it. That's why I bought it. I'm ecstatic at the end of the day. You know, we're really proud of this event. Exhausted, but exhilarated and great and happy and ready to be done. <laughs> he was $100, which I think is a really good price for a rabbit of this quality. You know what, it's, it's pretty interesting. I like it. I would attend again if another one would come. It's been awesome. It's been amazing. It's been, uh, it's been a great day. We feel really grateful that the community has rallied around us and um, continues to enjoy it as much as we do. Who knows what will happen. I think people are always going to want vintage stuff. They're always going to want to go shopping at an event like this and they're always going to want to come back, I hope, you know? You know, and then when it's over you think, oh man, it's already over. <laughs> I don't, you know, it's like, oh, can we? but then we get to do it again in November. Mm -hmm.